All right, I really wanted to talk about what's happening in East Palestine, Ohio, right now, because it's a very important story. It's not an important story because there's a lot of people who've been poisoned and it's, you know, it's sad for them and how it's going to affect their life. Of course, that's an important aspect of the story, but this is a very important story because um, it really just eliminates the illusion of what most people or what most people think the government is there to do. Uh, the illusion is the government's supposed to be there to protect the public, provide uh, necessary assistance in a case of emergency and things like that. What this uh, trail derailment in East Palestine shows is the government is doing the exact opposite. They aren't trying to protect the public. They're actively colluding with in a con- what appears to be a criminal conspiracy to cover up a mass poisoning of not just a town in Ohio, but this is spread um, from reports from other people in the area and journalists on the ground is spread to other states and possibly even into Canada. And there is no good faith interpretation of the events that have happened since this trail derailment in early February, where you can come come away with the conclusion that the government is actually doing everything in their power to help the people who've been poisoned by this railroad railroad company. And let's be clear about that. This wasn't an accident. It didn't just uh, you weren't. It's not like when you're sitting around at the dinner table and you knock your water over. Oopsies. They on purpose uh, got rid of and lobbied against safety regulations that would prevent accidents like this from happening. They understaffed the train and other uh, um, did other safety violations in order to save a, uh, uh, some money for the corporation. And it ended with a trail derail- derailment, which is a regular occurrence in the United States and with Nor- Norfolk, Norfolk uh, Southern. So they do all of this And it leads to people being exposed to deadly chemicals that cause cancers and all sorts of of deadly diseases. And completely avoidable, and it was done to make money, poisoning people to make money. You would think that, if the illusion was correct of what most people think of the government is, you would think that all of the scientists and um, the the entire governmental apparatus, the scientists and uh, the social workers and um, the emergency responses from FEMA and the EPA, you would think that they would all amass when we're faced with the, the largest uh, 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 chemical catastrophe, the worst chemical catastrophe in U.S. history, possibly. You would think they would converge to uh, uh, mobilize and and work for the people, right? Well, that's the illusion of government. What this story shows is the reality. They will go to any lengths to gaslight the public and uh, uh, cover up the people who just uh, ruin the lives of thousands of people. So, Let's start with some some basic information. So we're all on the same page here. Uh, here's a story about the derailment. So this all starts when they allow people immediately after the the trail der- derailment, the train derailment, and the chemical fire that the the first responders and the, the people responding to the accident decided to set the chemicals on fire and cause an explosion that spread the the and and uh, uh, the deadly chemicals even further within days the government said oh everything's fine guys come back you can all go back to your homes and there's nothing to see here um, that's what this is uh, a quote from the Ohio governor uh, saying there's no quote no 
showed no the the water showed no evidence of contamination. How would, do they know that? Let me show you the next uh, clip of an article that I have. So, North Norfolk Southern has been in charge of all the testing. It's been them who's been uh, testing the water to decide whether or not, after their train derailed and uh, uh, spilled chemicals, deadly chemicals in the community, it's on them now to conduct the testing to determine whether or not anything's contaminated. That sounds perfectly logical, right? In a sane world, that's exactly the, the response that you'd have. And mind you, the EPA isn't... They're out, uh, I think within the last week or so or, or two weeks, they decided that they are going to test the water. But for over a month, and most importantly, when they decided that it was safe for the people in the community to come back to their homes, the only testing that's been done on the water was from Norfolk Southern, the people who have a direct conflict of interest and a direct interest interest in saying that the water is safe they're the ones who paid for the test um and to say that everything's just fine and the government just took them at their word again this it strains credulity to think that the government is actually working on behalf of the people instead of the corporate donors in uh north southern and the rest of the rail industry and the rest of the, the the chemical industry in this country who would be on the hook if they were ever held responsible for poisoning communities as they do on a regular basis. Let me show you, uh, even with the clear conflicts of interest, immediately um, there were other issues with the test results. Oh, who could have guessed that? Um, so a Huffington Post reporter uh, was trying to get in contact with Northwick, Northwick, North, Norfolk Southern about, uh, f- quote, flawed water sampling. Uh, let me just read you the quote. Uh, when HuffPost contacted railroad giant North- Norfolk Southern about flawed water, water samples, sampling, its contractor conducted in East Palestine, Ohio, in the wake of the disastrous tra- train derailment, the company shrugged it off as an issue of, quote, erroneous recording on, par- on the part of the lab that analyzed the samples. Similarly, the Ohio Environmental Protection Agency, the state agency, so this is the state EPA, that relied solely on the results of those railroad-funded samples to initially declare that the municipal water in the village safe to drink. So, said, quote, said subsequently, quote, laboratory validation reports will be prepared and addressed and, ad- and will address this issue, but the results are valid. So even immediately, we're all, they, without putting aside the clear conflict of interest that North of Southern is, of course, of course going to say the water safe. But even with that, they're even acknowledging that there were some errors in the testing, and they still told people it was safe to go back. Now, for a second, let's just imagine uh, the circumstances in which Norfolk Southern is given unilateral ability to determine whether or not they poison uh, uh, thousands and thousands of people. Imagine a scenario where you're this corporation and you're on the board of this corporation, you're in charge of this investigation that could potentially cost your business billions of dollars. Under what circumstances? Would they come out and say, oh, oops, it turns out the water isn't safe. Don't bring these people back to their homes. We're going to cover everything, guys. Don't worry about it. Hotels, healthcare. care, uh, you need a new job. Don't worry about it. We're going to cover all of that. Don't worry about it. Because we tested the water and trust us it's safe. Under no circumstances would that ever happen. So, again, how on earth can you tell me that the government is not in on this and they just took this at face value as the best course of action in this situation? To let Norfolk Southern, Norfolk Southern decide whether or not there's poisoning in the community that they just poisoned. Okay, let's continue on. Oh, 45,000 fish and animals dead. Because immediately after this, this uh, incident, nobody was buying this. Nobody was buying this. In part because there were videos all over social media. And this is... Uh, uh, um, 
part of the what's uh, uh, putting this issue on full display right now, because this thing could have happened 40, 50 years ago and nobody else would have known about it. But because there's so many videos and, and on the ground reporting from, from citizen journalists and people being directly affected by this, the, it makes it impossible to contradict their story with this bullshit that the EPA and the government in Norfolk Southern is trying to put out. But we saw the videos of dead fish all throughout streams and rivers, just full of dead fish, uh, dead animals all throughout uh, forests and in and, and the woods and things like that. All kinds of animals, thousands of animals. You can't tell me that after a train derailment where a bunch of toxic chemicals, deadly chemicals get released, and then in that same vicinity, thousands and thousands of animals just drop dead. And then you're going to tell me that it's safe for regular people to, to ju- for people to just live there, to just live there, because that's not a sign of anything bad, right? And again, the government allegedly their role here is to determine whether or not it's it's safe for the public, and if it isn't, how do they uh, uh, take care of the people's health care? How do they take care of their housing and all this stuff? And again, completely abdicating what their their part of the social contract is in order to defend their corporate uh, masters at Norfolk Southern. Again, so the, the, the reality is not the illusion that the government is there to help in emergencies and protect the public. That's the illusion. The reality is we live in a corporate, or corporate uh, uh, oligarchy. We live under corporate rule. There are no... There is... They are the overlords. They're the ones who write the laws, the corporations and the executives and lobbyists. They're the ones who write the laws. They're the ones who are in charge of the enforcement, and which means they will always be exempt. The, the, the elites, the billionaires, the millionaires, the corporate uh, 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 structures that run this country, they're immune. And everything else that, that the government, that they've hijacked which is supposed to be a uh, part of the public sector working on behalf of the regular people in this country, they've weaponized it to just be a, 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 a tool to facilitate more corporate profit and to cover up any uh, 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 crimes committed in, uh, uh, in order to gain those corporate profits. That's all the EPA is doing, right? And it's clear as day. How do you see 45,000 dead animals and tell people, oh, it's, it's fine, on top of all, all this other information that I'm going to show you? Okay, so what else do we have here? Rail unions, uh, okay, so railroad, railroad workers who were tasked with cleaning up the derailment immediately became sick after um, being exposed to the, the chemicals in the area again. That would be a clear sign that, hey, maybe it's not safe for people to live here day in, day out for their entire for months and weeks and months and years on end. uh, If people can't even come to this area to clean it up without getting sick. But uh, um, and then here's the thing. uh, uh, Another part of the the work is getting sick because, again, like I spoke about, Norfolk Southern is in charge of the testing. Right. They're the ones who've been. all this, the entire idea that it's safe for people to live in this community is based off of Norfolk Southern's testing, right? So you mean to tell me you trust their meticulous uh, 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 safety protocols, even though their protocols led to the derailment of this train, even though uh, 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 what I'm about to show you next, which is that they're sending their workers out there to clean up these deadly carcinogens, deadly toxic chemicals without protective equipment. Here's the thing, and that's how they're getting, it's part of how they're getting sick. The letter uh, uh, claims that workers are not being provided with appropriate personal protective equipment such as respirators, eye protective, eye protection, or protective clothing. According to union representatives, 35 to 40 workers were on the track and were not supplied with proper breathing apparatus only paper and N95 mask and rubber gloves and boots to cover up. So they were given rubber gloves and paper mask to deal with uh, the deadliest chemical catastrophe in U.S. history. So they're going to poison their own workers. And again, we you mean to tell me the government actually believes they're operating in good faith here and they have the best interest of, of, of the people in this community who's been, who've been poisoned. You really mean to tell me that that 
they're going, they won't even give their workers, they won't even pony up a couple hundred, maybe a couple thousand dollars to give their workers after they're already under the spotlight for poisoning an entire town. They're going to send their workers out there to be poisoned. In, and and uh, again, you, you really expect these people are operating in let's, let's do what's best for the community. Come on, guys. This is clearly the government is not. Clearly, the government is not, and it's going to get to a point that that I have um, after I show you guys a few two more uh, clips from articles. And it wasn't just Norfolk Southern workers who were sick. So the CDC sent workers to East Palestine. Oh, and I know what you might think. Oh, they're sending people there to test the air, test the water for all these deadly chemicals that might be poisoning people. As they're sitting there breathing it in, getting rashes, uh, uh, breathing problems, sore throats, eyes, eye irritation, all these things that, that point to that they've been poisoned. The CDC didn't go there to test the, the quality of all these things. Again, there was at this point, they were still uh, uh, going by what Norfolk Southern was telling them from their testing. They just went there to survey the residents of East Palestine. So CDC workers were just going around, knocking on doors, talking to people at their homes. And half the team that went to East Palestine ended up getting the very same symptoms that the, the, the people in the town have been complaining about, headaches and nausea. Within a day of being there. Within a day of being there. So what does that show you? Clearly, there's something going on. There's something in the air. There's something in the water that's poisoning people in that town. And again, the government completely sweeps that under the rug. In fact, they didn't even say anything about the CDC workers. Half the team of 14 being uh, 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 sick, they didn't say anything about it for over a month. Again, if everything is fine in East Palestine, why is it that a grocery store chain that was using water that was bottled near uh, East Palestine, they are pulling those water bottles off of the shelves. They are no longer selling those waters. I'm, I highly doubt that a corporation uh, whose main goal is to drive profits and make a bunch of money, I highly doubt they decided to upend their um, business model and where they get the water that they used to sell and I'm sure make a bunch of fucking money from. I'm sure they did not make come to that decision lightly. It wasn't just some person on a Tuesday who woke up and said, you know what, I think this source of water, this source of revenue for us, where we're uh, bottling water, I think we're just going to not use that, and for absolutely no reason. That decision had to be made from a board um, and executives. People did had meetings. They maybe did had scientists involved, and they decided if we sell this water, we might be liable for poisoning people. So you know what? We're just not going to sell this water. Again, the EPA knows this. The government knows this. The federal government knows this. The state government knows this. And they're all acting like there's nothing going. There's nothing wrong in East Palestine. They will. They are literally going on saying the air is fine and the water is fine. Even though uh, uh, what I just said. So, what I want to end it on this because one of the there's a lot of talk, especially in the Democratic Party and among people who are still propagandized into supporting the Democratic Party and, of course, the, 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 the liars and propagandists on mainstream media, is that democracy is under attack. Our democracy is un under threat, and we have to protect it from these crazy right-wingers, these crazy fascists in the Republican Party. Because if they get elected, oh, democracy is over. If Trump gets elected again, it's over. If Marjorie Taylor Greene and all these other fucking goofy-ass Republicans get elected again, our democracy is over. And it was the same hysteria around like the whole January 6th thing that they still are going on about to this day. All democracy is under attack. And one of the things, that, and there's a lot of people who actually repeat this nonsense. So millions of people 
are believing what the propagandists in the mainstream media and the Democratic Party apparatus are telling them. A, a sizable amount of people. And one of the things that I've been trying to get them to understand is this, right? You can... How can you say... To, to, to act as if it's this binary choice between the Republicans and the Democrats, whether or not we have democracy or not, you'd have to completely ignore the way that our entire political apparatus works, or our poli- entire political system that's run on legalized bribery and corruption and corporate rule. You're going to act like the, the, the crux of our system has, is in any way relates to democracy. As if you remove Donald Trump and then the rest of the system, we have a, you know, a, a functioning democracy. There is no democracy here. There is no fundamental democracy here. That's gone. That's over with. And one of the things that I try to really dig into on the show and explain to people is, is this illusion of government. And people really... Are, are caught up in the duopoly propaganda. It's the good, my side's the good side, the other side's the bad side, and that's really what the, the main issue here is. No, this, this, this story in East Palestine, what does that tell you? It tells you whether a Democrat wins or a Republican wins. Corporations rule. It's them who write the policies, it's them who write the laws, it's them who enforce the laws. So if the majority of people don't have a say ever, and only the most powerful, the most well-connected um, run everything. That's not a democracy. So what I guess what I'm trying to say is, before you can ever be mad about anything about January 6th, before you can ever be mad about or, or, or scared about some sort of threat you think a Republican poses to you or Donald Trump poses to you in this country. And again, they are threats to democracy just like the Democrats are. But, but what I'm trying to get people to understand, to get out of this, this, this uh, mindset that it's the other team. And it's Republicans that are, are, are bringing about fascism and ending democracy in this country. Because you can't be mad about that and just completely gloss over the, 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 the corporate oligarchy that we live in. You can't tell me that at the behest of corporations, our government went and uh, 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 tested these dangerous, deadly uh, diseases in uh, bio labs all across the world, and it's led to outbreaks and pandemics like the COVID pandemic that just happened, and all of the, the, the chaos that ensued. That was, and then the, the, the push to, to sell untested vaccines to the public. Um, you can't tell me and again, lie to the public the entire way through. So how is that democracy? How are you going to, and it's not even really contested at this point, create the lab, create the, the virus in the lab, leak it on purpose or not, lie about it f- to the entire world for three years, and all while you're doing it, uh, 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 you're, you're manipulating the, the everything in favor of the corporations that are connected to the government. So, for example, like the, the pharmaceutical companies and the lockdowns, how Amazon and Walmart and all them made out like fucking bam, bandits at behest of corporations and against the wishes of regular people who did not want to go, undergo that. Or the healthcare system, how it's just... Uh, 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 every other country in the world can provide healthcare to their citizens and not bankrupt them. But here in this country, because of the corruption, because of legalized bribery, and because we don't have democracy... You can just get sick and die, and that's not because that's what the American people want, but because that's what the elites want, completely undermining democracy. The same with the wars. Um, instead of fixing issues here, we could spend $100 billion in Ukraine and $800 billion to fight in endless wars around the world against the wishes of democracy. None of these things are small things with this North Norfolk Southern thing, uh, uh, a story, how giant, massive... Uh, uh, uncontrovertible poison poisoning of a community, and instead of the the, the government 
interjecting to provide emergency service and to hold the people accountable, they're out there conducting, a, 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 a engaging in this conspiracy, criminal conspiracy. This fucking cabal of people who are directly have direct money interest in covering this up and allowing people to be poisoned and and um, just just w- with reckless abandon. So you cannot be you cannot just glance over all of those things that just uh, and the the fucking bailouts uh, of of banks they caused massive giant financial crises like in 2008 and what's happening right now through their own policies and their own recklessness everybody else is fucked millions of people will get lose their job millions of people will be evicted from their homes and then the government the only intervention that they have in the process is to bail out the rich make sure that the executives get bonuses not that they keep their jobs make sure that they and stay out of jail make sure they get bonuses while people get kicked out of their homes people lose their wages people lose their jobs and all that again how is that any sort of a functioning democracy we don't live in one so you can't overlook all those things and then be mad at at, at donald trump say he if he gets elected oh boy that's it that's the end of democracy it makes no sense this is this is a real threat to democracy corporate rule is a real threat to democracy what I've, I've been trying to put on, like, a, a, describe what it's like living in the United States. Because this is really fucking deranged at this point. The amount of, so, like, every day when you wake up and you live in the United States and you're not in the top 1%, it's like, you're watching the government and these corporations uh, uh, just maliciously just plant li- landmines all over your your like your 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 route to work your your um, your job when you, when you go to the grocery store when you go to the gym they're just planting these these landmines that you might step on and then any other any random person might step on throughout the day and you just go and you just walk through your daily lives and you go to work and you go to the grocery store, you go to the gym, you go pick up your kids from school, you go hang out with your friends and you just pray to God that you don't step on one of these landmines. And the landmines might be something like, oh, you get sick and because of our corrupt healthcare system and because of the legalized bribery, you might end up going bankrupt or even worse, dying. That is a very real possibility that millions of people just walk around with every day and it could just happen to them. They might step on that landmine on their way to work that day. Or it could be um, you uh, rent went up and your your uh, your wages haven't gone up and now you might be facing eviction or something like that. That's a very real possibility that that people face every day in this country. Or or and again, it's because of 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 corporations and the government colluding it to make these 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 uh, scenarios happen. Or it could be any number of issues like this, what's happening in East Palestine. Uh, you wake up and you get poisoned by a, a railroad company and the government, instead of helping you, they're just going to allow the poisoning to happen and they're just going to shrug their shoulders and say, hey, I don't know what, what to tell you. You, At some point, enough has to be enough. At some point, people have to be tired of this like constant state of precarity where you you just never know when it's your time when some completely avoidable calamity is going to fall upon you not because the luck of the drawn you know natu- just just a uh, 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 act of god and there's nothing we could do about it no but because a corporation wants to get off on you and it might be your date to today or tomorrow or something and it, it, this is just ridiculous I don't know what it's going to take for people to realize that we can't just keep going about our daily lives as if this shit is not happening and it doesn't affect you because it is going to eventually. So I don't know what it's going to take. This story in East Palestine is, um, it's, it's ridiculous. I, of course I feel for those people. It's a story I'm going to keep covering uh, because it makes it very hard to, act like we even 
have any semblance of a functioning government when this is how they're acting in an emergency when a corporation poisons their their uh, uh, citizens.